Hi, I'm John Anthony, and what I want to do is take you through some of the work we've been doing in cybersecurity and some of the software behind that, particularly some of the software we're doing in our 3D representations of our neural networks. So, this is where I do most of my best work. This is my coding den, and let's have a look at the code. So, the code we're looking at represents a neural network as a 3D sphere, and let's see what that looks like first. So the code I created, I created it on a long haul flight and I was pretty bored. I'd seen this animation showing the stock exchange and I thought, you know what, th this would be pretty cool to show some of our stuff as well. So I set this up using a set of libraries. So OpenGL libraries three, another library called D3. I picked all my points, mapped them together. Took me a few bored hours on the flight to finally get them all playing nicely in a sphere. And what did that look like when it was done? Well, let's go have a look at that. So it looked something a little bit like this. So here we have our sphere. And what I can do is I can rotate around the sphere. And I can look And what I'm look doing, looking in this chart, I'm actually looking for anomalies. So we're using neural networks to find people who stand out based on the, the, the concept that they are doing a job function slightly different than the one that we expect them to do. So Edward Snowden was an analyst, but he was doing a lot of backups. So potentially he looked a little bit more like a sysadmin. And when we're looking for anomalous behavior, that's kind of the sort of place that we start. Once we have a feeling that something's not quite right, we go into the forensics and we have a deep dive and we go and look through what everybody's been up to and their keystrokes and their mappings but you know that's not what this is about this really is about this 3d sphere how we created it so let's go back and what i won't do is i won't take you too far through the original code all i will do is say that one of the reasons i wanted to rework this code was frankly it was too messy even for me to use and i created it so there's very little hope of anybody else using it now Many years ago, back in the day when I worked as a broadcast engineer, we would create 3D scenes and 3D meshes and we'd add cameras and lights and objects into our 3D scenes. And what I really wanted to do was I wanted to bring, go back, and 3JS actually works uh, natively this way as well. What I really wanted to do was combine Angular and 3 and the old concepts that we used to do so that we could actually have a very simple layout that was a lot easier to understand. So effectively, I started here. So let's say, okay, let's have a scene. And inside our scene, what do we want? So maybe we can put some lights. We'll need to put a camera. And then here is our list of objects. So the scorecards that you see sit here, and they're in a repeating list, which means if I've got 100 staff, I'm going to see 100 of these scorecards. Now, what I want to do is pick those scorecards and put them into 3D space. And in this case, I want to put them into a sphere. So let's have a look at our scene first. So the scene code sets up the scene. It will set up the cameras and it will set up the objects. So, and for this particular example, I've actually set it up by default so that it can create a sphere of evenly spaced objects. Now, if you look at it, that is the code. So certainly a lot easier to understand than the original code. And here you can see that this scene is talking to its children. So it imports its children so it can communicate with them, so it can communicate with the objects and it can communicate with the camera. So let's have a look at how the objects work. So each object behaves autonomously in its own right. So we have an object. And when that object is set up, we have an ability to actually put that in a random position because it looks quite nice. Um, and you then move everything into place. And we have the ability to move an object to the position that we want to put it into. And the tween basically makes it move, smooth, move, move smoothly. So that's our object. We can create as many of these in the scene as we want to. How do we create the camera? So the camera is a little bit more complicated. In as much as I need to initialize the camera, and I need to initialize the controls on the camera as well and set them up. But having said that, not that complicated. So I'll set up my camera. I will set up my renderer so I can render the scenes. And then on top of that, I'm gonna put these controls which allow me to drag and drop the sphere around. 
and you can see here I'm actually working on an additional function here. This set rotation allows me to jump to any person on the sphere so that I can have a quick guide and a quick look. And that's it. So far easier than the original code, but hopefully this gives you a taste. If you're interested in coding, you can do it neatly, you can do it nicely, and, and, and trust me, it, it's often a lot easier than you might imagine. So what does it look like? It looks like this. And my name's been John Anthony. I hope that gives you a taste for maybe getting involved in the cyber world, in cyber coding, maybe getting involved in programming. And thank you for listening, and I hope it was of interest.